So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, with the weekly recap for round one of the Chainsaw Division. Flamethrower still has one match left to play this week, so we'll be doing that video soon. Emu, how are you? Hey, I'm doing okay. Good. Uh, you know. <laughs> we'll get to you later. Yeah, right. uh, that's, that was the, you know. <laughs> Alright, so let's kick off with the Shuffle Masters versus Mordorf. The Shuffle Masters are Hero of Mithra's team, they're a Kemri team. And Mordorf, I believe, is Matto. Yep. Now, they're both fairly new new teams, new players, uh, rather new coaches. And uh, I watched the this game myself live, and the the Dwarves were incredibly lucky. They had a, a very early uh, uh, touchdown. A very uh, elf bullshit play. Okay, good. And it kind of went back and forth uh, here and there. And... <laughs> Again, Hero was super heavy with the fouls, but Mato answered back with a permanent, uh, <laughs> with, with a permanent injury, uh, and that being a death. So, that's rough. interesting. I, I mean, the Kemri versus Dwarf matchup is actually kind of rough for Kemri because Kemri are one of the few teams that are actually worse at handling the ball than Dwarves. Um, interesting statistics here: very few armor breaks. When you look at the statistics and look at how many blocks succeeded on both sides, and then look at how many armor breaks there were, that doesn't really add up. Uh, that, so, most most of the casualties that must have come must have come, as you say, through the fouling. Yes, yeah, super super heavy foul game. It was uh, it was something else. I wonder how many d d does it track that? Well, Why does it track fouls? That's stupid. You'd think it would, but never mind. So, yeah, other than that, we can see that the Dwarves won by one touchdown to zero. They got the MVP on a Troll Slayer, much better than getting the MVP on the Skeleton. Uh, SPP breakdown, they got a lot more SPP. Uh, so, some casualty SPP there. I guess Hydraulic or Radish, one of the two, scored a touchdown and a casualty. And then the other one got the MVP, that's my guess. So yeah, a solid a solid win for for Mordorf. Yep, it was a it was a good match. Very nice, very nice. Uh, moving on, we come to the Blazing Saddles versus the Breakfast Beer Company. Uh, this game I watched myself, and this was one of the weirdest games of Blood Bowl I've ever seen. Why? What, what happened? Um, was... So. It was humans against dwarves. It was a very good game in the first half. Lots of fighting, lots of um, weird decisions being made by the coaches. Um, in the end, though, however, the dwarves got kind of screwed by Nuffle. They, uh, on turn seven in the first half, they had a chance to steal the ball from... Well, they had stolen the ball from the human team. They had a runner downfield in scoring position, needed two GFIs. He had two turns to score and no human could have reached him or the ball in either of those two turns and all he had to do was do two GFIs to score er, er, failed his first GFI failed the re-roll stunned himself oh no yep well, it was rough peace. it was rough so yeah that was a pretty um low scoring low, there weren't very many casualties very very Wait. little SPP not much. Like to do, yeah. So. Yeah. No fouling. So you know, good win for the Blazing Saddles. Always nice to see a win in your first match of the ground. Not much else to report on that game. So uh, the third game was uh, between the Big Sweaty Bullocks, Chaos Dwarf team, versus Bretonians. This game I didn't get to watch. I, I briefly watched the replay of it, and it just seemed yeah. like a a pretty standard Chaos Dwarf victory. They marched down the pitch. Uh, both teams really struggled to pick up the ball, actually. I mean, the, the thing to note, though, is their MVP is Tall Twitch, and Tall Twitch died within the first three turns or something like that. Yep. Um, so that was that's pretty unfortunate. Yeah, so actually, in fact, Two Skull Guard only got two SPP out of that game, which is utter bullshit. Whereas uh, Big Sweaty Bullocks ended up getting a actually fairly respectable amount. And a good spread as well. A lot of time with SPP in the early levels, you've got to look at the spread. Because just having all your SPP on one guy isn't necessarily the best. 
Yeah, my I I, I feel that right now. <laughs> yeah. Should we talk okay. about your game then? Yeah, and so let's 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 look at it. It was a it was a snooze fest to say the least. Um, the most notable thing was the uh, death of a chaos warrior and yep. a death of a skink. So two deaths. One was a foul. So my foul, my skink fouled a chaos warrior to kill him. Uh, it was partly because of vengeance. He killed a skink. Um, but yeah, no scoring. I had I had a chance. We both had our chances, and we both screwed or rather screwed by Nuffle. I would uh, say so. Having watched our, our that game, away. there were definitely chances for both teams. There were definitely things that both yourself and your opponent could have done differently to perhaps increase your chances. But rolling Bonehead, I think it was four turns in the row at the end with your Croxagore, really, really didn't help you. Yeah, my Croxagore, uh, even it will this is a small aside into next week. You know, he's he's done nothing. <laughs> he's so <laughs> he's been so useless. Uh, the the match after this, I rolled double ones for his first attack Ugh. and uh yeah ending uh, my that yeah, was that's, rough. that's rough spp wise we're looking at you know five for a skink nothing else kind of yep. low yep uh, on a skink, not, not too great um and he got a five two one that's not bad uh unfortunately with a dead chaos warrior not as good as it could be he yeah, also that's... rolled a two for for his prize winning so kind of low there as well yeah, a dead so. chaos warrior versus a dead skink i know what i'm taking every time yeah, ex it, that's, Hint, that's it's what, the skink. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I, moving I was on. Happy in that. Uh, Nibblers with attitude, Skaven team, the only Skaven team in the tournament, taking on Le Gros Manjures. Sorry to any French people, uh, who I just brutally butchered your language. Um, this is who is this? Oh, that's Chabs. That's Chabs' team. He is a very experienced coach. Um, I was surprised by the result of this game, but having spoken to both the coaches, neither of them were really surprised, just because of the difference in experience between the two coaches. Um, pretty standard looking Chaos vs. Skaven game, you can see by the ball possession, that the Chaos team just caged up and just marched down the field. There was very little that the Skaven could actually do about it. Uh, when you look at the SPP as well, you can see that they're was a lot of dying, a lot of a lot of dead, Skaven. I mean, this was the game uh, for for Ligro Manger. I mean, five two six two two. Yep. A level a level up at right at the beginning. I mean, that's. that's yeah, a, a level up, and then four players who will level up, who will level up with the MVP next game. I mean, like that number five. Uh, who is that? I guess that's. Yeah, that was the beast, uh, that's Beastman. a beastman. That's a beastman. Yeah, so he can quite easily get a vanity pass to level up next game. Pretty nice. Um, uh, sad to see a from. Chaos team getting off to a fast start. That doesn't bode well for the rest of this division, because particularly in a long format, if these Chaos teams get rolling, they could become quite hideous to deal with. Yeah, his um, Chaos Warriors, uh, all except for one, have two SPP. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have the Hogs of War, which is another Chaos Dwarf team, versus the Sandler All-Stars, a uh, Bretonian team. Now, this game actually was won by the Bretonians. Um, OP Kitty, who's the coach of the Bretonian team, is very much in favor of the passing Bretonian style. And I'm going to guess that it's just his opponent, the Hogs of War, couldn't just couldn't find a way to score. I mean, if you look at the statistics, it, it looks like Hogs of War should have won. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's the uh, the passing. Yep. If you, uh, actually, if you look at it, actually, there's no passing at all. Oh, well, yeah, no passing. So <laughs> it must have just been a lucky break. I unfortunately hey, I didn't worked, I didn't so. catch this game and I didn't have a chance to look at the replay, no, so I, I don't know exactly what happened. Um, but yeah, so talking to the coaches, it just seemed like a, a lucky break for the uh, Bretonian team here. Looking I mean, at SPP the SPP is not too bad for Hogs War. Oh no! So you're happy you know, with that? Maybe it might be a loss now, but again, Chaos Dwarves similar boat to Chaos. When they get when they get rolling, they can become terrifying. Bretonians, I don't think you're too worried about at any stage of the game. So now we have uh, BJ versus Sarah, the other admin. Uh, this is, was an undead versus orc matchup. Uh, quite a foul heavy. 
Uh, I, wa I watched the replay of this game and um, there was an awful lot of fouling being done. Fine, you know, it's, it is in the game for a reason. But when you look at the, uh, the statistics, you can really see the impact of, of the fouls. You know, 23 blocks succeeded and 5 injuries inflicted. That's quite, quite incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then when yeah. you look when you look at the SPP spread, Bob Weir got eleven Ooh, SPP. Crap. That's pretty all right. Great. He got five of them from the MVP. So was he doing some passing? Yeah, he got he got a vanity pass. So this uh, mummy actually got six SPP from um, casualties. He would have leveled up just on the casualties he got. That's so actually, when we, look, when we look at the SPP, we actually see that none of the injuries were, um, well, maybe one, let's have a look. No, none of the injuries were performed by fouling. They were all done by blocks. Because if you, yeah, when you look at the SPP, Kreutzmann got, um, unless Kreutzmann scored. Yeah, Kreutzmann must have scored and got a casualty. Phil Lesh I mean, at the, the end of the day, he... He's in a good position. Oh yeah, this is crazy good. Um, he he ended up going guard on his uh, on his mummy, so uh, he's going to be dominating the field. Oh yeah, uh, it's, it's the best choice bad. when you don't roll enough to get block. And uh, unfortunately, the pickle Borks lost a black orc, which is pretty bad news. So that brings us to the last matchup, which is the Orc and Tide versus uh, Lost Mariachis, Orcs versus Wood Elves. Um, can be difficult for wood elves to deal, sorry, orcs to deal with wood elves early on in the game when they don't have tackle. The SPP has a vanity pass and a casualty on the uh, orc side, then a score, a vanity pass, and a casualty on the um, on the elf side. So you know, pretty low scoring affair. Would have been nice to have got a few more touchdowns. But I guess the Orcs did a fairly good job of keeping the ball away from the Wood Elves. Yeah, I mean... 1-0. I mean, if you look at the SPP, it, I mean, it, was, it looks pretty good. I don't know. Both teams uh, got an expulsion. That's quite unfortunate. Well, so again, again, they were fouling each other. There's a lot of fouling going on in this league. Foul. This is the foul league. Uh, very <laughs> very yeah. low life expectancy. Yeah. We'll yeah. see. Hopefully, we can see more deaths in the second week, just for fun. But <laughs> blood. That's all. I, that's all I'm out for. Yep. Blood. Uh, blood. Blood. So yeah. To summarize round one, very few unexpected results. I think. I expected. The I expected the lizard men, your lizard men, to beat the chaos team. That didn't happen. It was a tie. Um, I expected the Skaven to beat the. The, another Chaos team, which didn't happen. They ended up losing 2-1. Other than that, nothing too unexpected. Yeah, well, it, there were, I think, good matches all around. Oh, yeah. and, I'd say so. I mean, the only real worry now is Lake Gross Monjeu from... Uh, they, they might run away with it, uh, but it's too early to tell. The Kamiri might also put up it a can good... Also, uh, it also depends on what skills he chooses for his, his uh, team if he... Um, Knowing, knowing that Chabs is quite an experienced coach, I would expect him to choose the correct, in my opinion, skills. Which is most chaos teams will try and build towards a position where all of their pieces have block, claw, and mighty blow. So they just kill people every time they punch people. I mean, however, however, the majority of open ladder chaos teams overvalue claw and mighty blow, and they don't value block highly enough. Block is statistically the best skill for killing people because it knocks people down more often it's also got defensive use yeah i mean i'm hoping to see this this league turn into a high casualty league i don't um, think you need to worry about that with two two chaos dwarf teams two dwarf teams two orc teams to mirror you. two chaos um, and, and a camry yeah i don't I, I don't think you need to worry about the amount of death that's going to take care, take place in this division you need you can never have too much blood, in my opinion. Uh, I I would tend to agree with you, says the oh. elf coach. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's, it's usually it's my blood. Except when it's if it's you, no blood. Everyone no blood. else, yeah, everyone else, everyone, yeah. 
As long as I just have to spectate the bloodletting, I'm happy. Alright, Amy. Thanks very much, man. Take care. Yeah, take care. See you, See you around. Bye now.